What's going on guys? Victor here and Brick and I just got back from an absolutely epic fishing trip with our good buddy Josh from Heritage Excursions. I'm gonna have all of this stuff linked below. We took a trip up to Panama City. We got on a lot of bottom fish including these vermilion snappers. So in today's video we're gonna show you how to catch them, how to clean them, and how to cook them. Stay tuned. All right so first stop we're gonna pick up some live bait on this neat little barge. I never seen anything like it but we're gonna pick up some cigar minnows first. Y'all have a good day. Good luck. Thank you. A lot of cigar men in here. A lot of people hook them through the nose or hook them through the eyes. I hook them through the tail, just like this. As far back as you can get on one side, turn him around, and go through the other. So they swim away from you? Yep. He'll swim just like that. A lot of times if you hook him in the eyes, his head is buried down there in the bottom. No bites like that. Uh, there, there's only one way to hold your rod and reel, and that's like this. Any other way is wrong. We worked for a guy named David Plummer back in the day. He said the only thing that goes under your arm is crutches and deodorant. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. Oh, man. <laughs> we got David on in the back. Oh, yeah. I got bit on the way down. Been here for all of three minutes. Two baits down, two people already hooked up. 190 foot rookie behind me. David just swung one over the rail. Mr. David hooked up in the back. Oh yeah, it's a better fish. All right, another red snapper. They're all in that like 18 inch to 20 inch range right now. This next place is a old school bus from what I was told. We've been fishing out here a long time. Back in the day, a lot of people used to make their own private reefs and we've had this one a long time and I was told it was a school bus. Hopefully school's in session. Oh. You were waiting to use that. <laughs> I stole that one from one of y'all yesterday in history class. So we've went to yeah, one spot like and um, we've gotten a couple snapper. Not really the size that Josh is looking for. You know, down by us, we catch a mutton snapper that big and we're stoked. You know, 18, 20 inch fish is the keeper, but they get some really big red snapper out here. And they kind of go from spot to spot. And Josh was telling me that a lot of these spots, they'll move from the hurricanes and storms. And so you're always just checking each one and looking for those bigger fish, trying to find out where those bigger fish are holding on that day. Out here, we're literally in the middle of nowhere. It's kind of like a desert. So any structure will hold, will hold fish. David must have the magic bait. I'm telling you, man. No, he, he's not, he doesn't have you. Another red. We're getting plenty of bites, plenty of action. It's just not the size fish we're looking for, but that's okay. There's Josh right here. You should see a screen. It is literally spots everywhere. Oh, yeah. something ate it on the way down. Oh yeah, the snappers are... I didn't even have to jig it. I think this might be a red snapper on the jig. That is a snapper of sorts. Beeliner? Ooh, it's a oh. beeliner. Ah, Look at that. That's an ocean liner right there. Look at that. So, some people call them beeliners. We usually call them vermilion snapper. Same species, right? Yep. And um, this guy ate the jig. Josh said bring some jigs. I brought some jigs. And I've always wanted a um, jig on the west coast in the Gulf of Mexico because I know that they have a very good healthy snapper population. If you guys saw the screen, where there's one vermilion, there's usually hundreds of vermilions. So what these jigs do, kind of mimics an injured bait fish. You have all different sizes. This is a must-add vertical jig. I'll have it linked below. And you guys can actually save 20% off if you guys use my code LANDSHARK. I'll have it linked below. But you drop it down and it kind of goes like this, flutters. It resembles a ballyhoo, sardine, cigar minnow kind of injured. Just flutters all over the place. And fish can't resist it sometimes. You guys have seen us. There's days where it'll outfish live bait. Drop down. Get all the way to the bottom. We're on bottom and all you do is this. You just kind of jig it erratically. And then if you don't get hit within like the first 40 feet, you drop it back down. If the real erratic jerking doesn't work, you can kind of do a high, fast jerk and then kind of let it flutter on the way down. 
Josh marked a bunch of fish on the screen, which we thought were red snapper, but they actually turned out to be vermilion snapper, also known as bee liners. So we have bumped down our terminal tackle, smaller hooks, kind of like a little chicken rig, cut up Boston mackerel, and we're just dropping them down. And vermilions, like many other snapper, they're schooling fish. So when you mark one, you know there's a ton down there. Yeah. Literally just hit bottom and look at this. Look at that rod tip. See how aggressive it is? There's probably 10 fish just pouncing on that bait. And we're already on. It's that fast. I'll tell you what, Captain Josh Heritage Excursions puts you on them. It's a very neat fishery, the Gulf side. You know, on, on our side, we get a lot of mangroves, mutton snapper, yellowtails, but over here in the Gulf, it's uh, red snapper, gag grouper, and vermilion snapper, would you say, are like the bread and butter? For sure. These fast reels. Oh, there we go. So we try to fish circle hooks always, especially for snapper, just in case you catch any undersized fish. It's generally in the corner of the mouth. And this guy right here, these are generally in deeper water. Like what's what's the range you usually find them in? Uh, anywhere from 80 foot or better. Like by us, we very rarely get them inside of 200 feet. Usually. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah, you guys have a very good as soon as I hit the bottom. Yeah. Vermilion fishery. Look at that. So check this out. We catch porgies on our coast, but I don't think I've yeah, ever seen one with these colors. Look at how pretty that is. Greens, pinks, reds, blues. Look at that little blue coloring around his eyes. The green translucent over there. Pair of triggers. <gasps> so they're closed? Yeah. Oh man. Oh man, that is depressing. Pair of triggers. Brooke, look at the size of that trigger fish. Ray just pulled up two really nice triggers. I literally dream of having a trigger fish spot on our coast. They catch so many over here. I gotta come back here when they're in season because they're not in season right now. But those were some studs. It's fighting like a red, isn't it? Or triggers? I think it's trigger fish. Trigger fish moved in. This is just so sad to me to be releasing these trigger fish. See how pretty he is? See how he's got that blue in his face? His top fin there. So Brooke, you're gonna be my, my model. So push his front fin. See how it won't go down? Press the second fin. And well, that's how they get the name Triggerfish. And his skin is super tough. When I was a kid growing up, we used to call these leather jackets. Okay, so we loaded up on a good amount of bee liners for millions. We probably got 20 in the box. But the main thing we came here for on this trip is to get on red snapper and gag grouper and also some scamps. So Josh is just circling the boat and trying to position us on the structure. And they got this neat little trolling motor. When there's not a lot of current, it'll literally keep you spot on so you don't have to anchor, which is the coolest thing in the world. 12 ounce lead, three-way swivel, and looks like 100 or 80 pound liter. We drop it down nice and slow. If you drop it down too fast, your bait's gonna helicopter on the way down. Then get him. I'm guessing it's a red snapper. I'm breaking all the rules on the boat in the armpit. There was one rule and you broke it. Ray's hooked up. Good. Victor's hooked up. Not yet. Silence. Not there. yet. Silence. <laughs> Try and light. I'll tell you what, they hit it hard. Mangrove. Big old mangrove. Ooh, wow, baby. There you go. I'll take Eat some that, of those. Dude. Yeah, heck yeah. Nice Pretty fish. What do you got? Uh, cool. Ooh, that's a good one. Oh, that one will keep. Yeah? All right. Thank you. First ever gulf red snapper for me. I think they might be the prettiest snapper species. Just all pink yeah, and red. Bit. Yeah, he, it looks like he's got some scars on him, like he might have been attacked. Yeah, you think? Or maybe he rubbed up on the wreck. Yeah, Very okay. pretty fish. Another mangrove snapper. Nice. Seems like you gotta move to that back right left corner of the boat, Vic. The back right left. <laughs> However you get there. There you go. There he is, Josh. Oh, getting oh, yeah. stuck. That's, right that's a great, that's, that's a big gag. Right big gag. Big gag. Oh, please don't break off. Man. Dog or uh, pinfish or cigar minnow? Pinfish. 
toting it to the rail. Back the drag off on him a little bit and make sure we didn't pull him off. Big snapper. Big old snapper. Wow. Big, that's, that's the one. Oh my god. Heck yeah. Holy that's all stud right wow. there. Wow. Look at that thing. Nice. That's the ones we came after, guys. Heck yeah, that's a beast. Look at this thing. All right, just, just, just stop. This Don't do nothing. A freaking animal. It's just a giant snap. Look at his stomach puffed up. That's the biggest red snapper I've ever seen. He's, he's what, you think over 15? Oh yeah. Look at this hey, crazy growth thing he's got on him right here. Oh, yeah. Nice job, man. Thank you, sir. This is Josh's fish right here. I'm just holding it up. I've been chasing him for a few years. You ever want to go out with a good charter captain? If they have a commercial fishing background, you know you're going to be in the meat, which is this guy right here. Commercial fishing background, they have the numbers because their livelihood depends on putting fish in the boat. If they don't put fish in the boat, they're not eating. Yep. Right? That's exactly right. There's nothing in the world that this piece of bait right here won't catch. We've caught everything on the Boston mackerel backbone. We call them Skeletor. I tell you what, David has caught more fish, I think, today than anyone else, and he's silent every single time you just look over and he's hooked up in the corner over there. Must be that, that spot. They just Must like the back of the boat. Back corner <gasps> back here. Saw that one. All right, Brick, they're coming to you next. They're going down the line. Don't yeah, go. baby. Red grouper. What's it going to be, 20 inches? Yep. Easily. Oh, yeah. Nice. We got another red snapper. It's like shooting fish in a barrel out here. <laughs> so this is the, um, we're after gags, red grouper, which is that guy right there, and then red snapper. All right guys, so we are back in shore, and I have to give a huge hats off to Captain Josh back there of Heritage Excursions. Josh and Ray have been fishing these waters for years. They got a really good commercial fishing background, and this just doesn't happen by happenstance. If you guys are ever in the Panama City area or are looking to plan a vacation this summer, this fall, next year, seriously check out Panama City. Fishing is just incredible. I mean, you got fillets for days. You're gonna be eating good all year long. I'm glad you enjoyed it, man. That's, that's what we're after. Even if we don't catch one, we want everybody to have a good time. So Those I will have a nice bonus though. <laughs> <laughs> I will have all of his stuff linked below where you guys can find him. I'm with Tommy from Tails and Scales over here. Fish processing out of Panama City Beach. Tommy's got a really neat business. You want to tell us briefly what it is? Basically, people go out fishing and bring the fish to me and we process them for consumption. This is a custom built basically fish box, right? Correct. All insulated. Basically just like a giant fiberglass commercial box, AC'd in, and so I'm gonna let Tommy take it away. He's gonna be the star of the show. No other brand of knife. Dexter's are in a commercial fisherman's blood, in a fish processor's blood, all right? You've been using these knives for how long? Long time. Long time. <laughs> this is his bread and butter. A man's, when a man's livelihood depends on his tools, that's how you know it's good. All right, so Dexter's are the real deal. All made in the USA. Tommy's been using them for a long time, so all the knives that are we're gonna be using in today's fillet demo are gonna be linked below. It's gonna be a beeliner or vermilion snapper. You go behind the head, take my knife, turn it, and lay it flat on the bones. Sometimes you have to feel your way through. And what I do is go to the tail, flip him over, lay the knife, flex the knife, let the knife do the job, let it be in, pull the fillet off. I like to take and cut them down the lateral line, pull this to the side, remove the belly bone, and then come in and remove the pin bone. What's your favorite knife to use? Dexter, nine inch. Nine inch? Yep. Okay, black snapper's a little bit harder. They got a coarser rib bone in them, so we'll do this one just a little bit different. We'll take this little stiffer knife and come through and break, break through the belly bones. And I'll flip him over, do the same thing on this side. I'll come back to my nine inch knife. So how many fish do you process a day pounds wise? Uh, it 
close to 2,000. You guys take a look around me. This place is clean. For 2,000 pounds of fish to be cleaned here every single day, day in and day out, you guys keep it very clean. Bleach and Dawn dishes. Bleach and Dawn everywhere. <laughs> it's the recipe for success, Bleach and Dawn right there. So this is Black Snapper. We have it labeled at the bottom, BS. And you come over here to the machine, lay it flat, make sure there's no scales in it or nothing, so it seals perfectly. And it's conveniently labeled right there. Yeah, that's that's Bricky's bee liner right there. It's all that one big. You know you when they the were pool. confused about what was the bee liner yeah. and the red snapper fly that you had a big bee liner. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you got the 40 and you just put it down. Yeah, we'll back in the evening. Beautiful. There's the outcome. Red snapper, that's the bee liner. So, so is this your job mainly? Sometimes. I kind of graduated up a little bit. I'm deboning now. What, wait, what are the levels? You go from fish cutter to back sealer or is the other No, way you go from bagging to the table, to the block. That's what we call it. Normally people wait out here and we open this window up right here and call the number out. And then they pick up. So, it's like it's a go line. I watched the heck out of y'all's video. Really? Yeah, you're, in, you're in the yes, video sir. right now. Nice yes, to sir. meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you, man. To meet you. What's your name? Preston. Preston. Yes, sir. Preston's on YouTube now. That's what I do. He's a day can on the kitchen. Yeah. Yes, sir. Who'd y'all go out with today? With Josh and Ryan. Oh, yeah. Oh, with Ray. Josh good, and Ray. Good folks. Good oh, yeah. Folks. I'm yeah. glad y'all come here. I didn't know y'all came here. We Panama. loved it. I love Panama City. It was a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Us. Anytime. I like to throw a little bit of informational stuff in my videos, some little tackle type tips. So, the guy, the rig you guys saw us fish. I call it a chicken rig, some people call it a high-low rig, depending where you are in the country, but it's a pretty universal thing. It's a piece of mono or fluorocarbon leader with a bunch of hooks attached to it. So I'm going to show you guys how to make it really quick. You take the leader of your choice. This is 40 pound mono. Now we're going to make a dropper loop. I'm going to take my line, go like this. I'm going to pinch it in one section on my left hand, and I'm going to continue to make more loops in the main line portion. I'm going to do about three to four spins. So now you guys can see, I have it pinched on both sides and I created a little loop. I'm going to take the end of the main loop, put it through that opening between the two pinched ends, pull it tight, okay? And now I'm going to take both hands, pull away from me, and that's all there is to it. It's as easy as that. My favorite hook of choice, Demon Circle Hook by Mustad, and you guys can save 20% off all Mustad products and Tough Line products, which is the uh, the braid that Mustad has acquired. You guys can use my code Landshark. Mustad makes a bunch of great products and they really help out the channel, so I gotta plug them whenever I can. I'm gonna have all of the stuff linked below. The Vermilion Snapper have really small mouths, so you gotta fish a small hook. If you're gonna fish a really big hook, you're gonna rip holes in their mouths and you're gonna pull on the way up. And to get our hooks onto our rig, I'm gonna pinch that end, go through the eye of the hook, go around the hook point, and then pull tight and that's all there is to it you do that a couple times in sequence and you get yourself as big of a chicken rig as you want it's a really good rig to fish if you're trying to find new area or if you mark something and you see a bunch of things lit up on the screen drop some down with some cut bait and you don't know what's down there you might be in red snapper vermilions a big school of porgies it's a great searching rig we got red snapper on the menu tonight and then these right here Remember the grouper that we caught? That big gag? These are the cheeks from that grouper. All-purpose flour. Going to season it up with, you guessed it, garlic powder. And as, as well as some oregano. Salt and pepper our fish before we put it in the seasoned flour just to make sure that um, the fish has enough salt and pepper. Okay, we're also gonna Put some salt in our seasoned flour as well. We don't have to use a fork today, we can just shake it up. Seasoned flour. Go straight into the flour, one side, two side, done. And this, a lot of people always ask us, what is your favorite fish to eat? And I think the more and more I cook, and the more fish I eat and the more species, it's not the fish for me, but it's the method. So pan fried fish is one of my favorite ways to eat fish. I love that little crisp 
um, exterior you get from the fish and from that seasoned flour. Fish dredged in flour going straight into an egg wash, which is gonna go straight into a pan full of olive oil. Three to four minutes per side. Now we flip, and that's what you're looking for. So first batch is done. Nice golden brown color. Okay, we just took the last batch of fish out in the very same pan. We're gonna extract all those flavors. I have some shallot and yellow onion. It's gonna go in. Okay, onion's been in for about two minutes. Now, garlic. Okay, I have to smell it. Now we're gonna deglaze with some dry sherry. We're gonna do about a cup of this. Now we're gonna get all those brown bits off, all that crispy egg and bits of flour that was stuck to the pan, that's what we deglazed with. And you see it floating around in there, and that's just gonna add another layer of flavor to our sauce. The uh, sherry has reduced by about half. Now we're gonna add some chicken stock. Ideally, you'd want seafood stock in a dish like this, but a vegetable stock, chicken stock, lamb juice, anything kind of light tasting, I think would work very well. Some things that I did not show on camera, added some tomato and thyme, and I have reduced the heat to low. I also added a little bit of cornstarch and cold water to thicken it up. Now we're gonna slowly incorporate some cream. Real slow to make sure it doesn't curdle, and that's why we reduced our heat as well. This is our finished sauce, and it is so delicious. Some fresh parsley, and at the very end, as well as some fresh scallion. Now we're gonna take some of our sauce, pour it right on top of the gnocchi we, that we made. But we also wanna save some sauce for our fish as well. So this is what we have for dinner tonight. This is what Brooke made. She made a baked snapper and a lemon butter Parmesan sauce. Looks beautiful, babe. If you guys don't know, I'll have her channel linked below. Franchise style red snapper. And then this is the sherry cream sauce. We go right back on top of the fish, just like that. The gnocchi with the sherry cream sauce. And then some fresh zucchini. Very Italian style dish. Look at that. I want to thank you guys so much for watching and once again a huge shout out to Josh from Heritage Excursions for putting this whole trip together and also to the Bay House Playhouse which is the Airbnb that Brooke and I stayed at for the three nights that we were in Panama City. It is located in the historic district of St. Andrews. A beautiful little Airbnb just within walking distance to the brewery, downtown and everything. I will have the Airbnb with all the information linked in the description box below. And another big thank you to Tommy and the crew for letting us film in the trailer. It was a very neat experience. And if you guys ever need your fish cleaned in Panama City, go ahead and check them out. We got plenty of fish for lots of family dinners, fed the neighbors, friends, family, and that's what it's all about. Putting the resource to use, not letting it go to waste. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching this video, as always, and I'll catch you guys in that next one.